delightful, delicious, to lovely. My name is Christina Lee, and today I am going to be making a vegan artisan bread. I think most bread is vegan. Let's call it egg bread. Oh, my hair. I don't know how you guys are faring in this quarantine business. My hair is not doing well. Look at this. Woo. Woo. That's crazy. I, ooh, I'm shedding too. Disgusting hair situation. You're only going to see me in a hat for a long time coming. Um, also, I put makeup on for the first time in a while and got fucking foundation in my eye. My left eye won't stop watering, so I'm going to be sniffing through this whole video because my whole sinus system is irritated with me <laughs> at this point. So I don't have the COVID. I'm just going to be sniffly because I have makeup in my eye. Um, this, oh, here's another aside. So this, this is my new favorite glass. I don't know if you can see that it's very heavy bottomed and tapers up a little bit to the top. It was a candle until just the other day. And it had burned itself out and I tossed it in the trash and hit the trash, hit the trash so heavily. I was like, wow, it's such a nice piece of glass. I feel bad throwing it away. So I scraped all the wax out of it, the remaining wax. I soaked it and took the labels off of it. And now it's this really nice little tumbler. And glass isn't porous, so it doesn't retain the smell of the candle that once lived there. So my, my new favorite glues. Um, I am making bread. I wonder if some of you guys will have a hard time finding yeast. Yeast is one of the things after toilet paper and uh, hand sanitizer that are, is hard to get. Hand sanitizer just doesn't exist anymore. I've found that toilet paper exists everywhere some of the time, but hand sanitizer does not. And I'm very lucky because my friend David gave me in March, in the first, second week of March, he gave me this 30 ounce thing of hand sanitizer. Why not use some? Um, because his, his husband had, bought, had purchased five of them, uh, and his husband took this thing very seriously from the very beginning, so he's incredibly prepared for every development. But I was at the time going to head to New Jersey and do a horror convention, and I was going to be hugging hundreds of people, and I thought um, that'd be a good idea to have some hand sanitizer along with me uh, in case they had cooties, but then it got canceled anyway because the whole world has cooties. Uh, anyway, if you can't find yeast, uh, it's going to be a problem. I buy my yeast in this giant bag. I get it at a store here in LA called Smart and Final. Uh, this is good for like two years. And I don't know, it costs like seven or eight bucks or something, I don't know. But uh, I have a fuck ton of yeast. And uh, because I cook all the time, and when this shit hit the fan here, and I, I didn't buy stock up on toilet paper and steak and milk and bread like other people did. I stocked up on flour, sugar, and yeast. Because I thought I could make pizza dough and pasta and breads and tortillas and everything I wanted to make if I had those ingredients. So I have a lot. So in this big bowl in front of me, oh, so I got this recipe from my friend Andrea. She lives in Little Rock, Arkansas. She and her husband, Ed. And they have, I think, six kids, four of their own, two they adopted, I think they have. Uh, they have a lot of mouths to feed on a budget, and this is a bread that I got from them. What's really great about it is you make all this giant amount of raw dough and you put it in the fridge and then you just t tear off hunks of it at a time and cook it. Uh, you cook it in pieces so you don't have to have one big, a whole bunch of bread made all at one time. It's getting older and losing its fresh bread loveliness as days go on. Just make enough to eat for that day and the next day bake another little one. So it's very simple. In here I have a tablespoon and a half of yeast that I whisked in to three cups of warm water. So that's what's in there. Now I'm going to add six and a half cups of flour. I wonder if I should add some salt to this. I wonder, what does her recipe say? Where did I put it? Is it right here? No, it's not. Where is it? I'll be right back. Her recipe does call for salt. It calls for a tablespoon and a half of salt. So I'm going to put that into the yeast thing. There's a tablespoon. Whoops. And a half of salt. Mix that around a little bit. And now I'm going to add six and a half cups of sugar. I have a flour. Six and a half cups of flour. I wonder if I should get a scraper. Uh, one. Two. Whoops. Three. Four. Five. Wow, that's a lot. Six and a half. And I think I'm going to have to get in here with my hands probably to make this. I'll try it with the spoon, but I may end up having to dig in there with my 
freshly sanitized hands. We shall see. All right. Okay. You know, I don't know if it's because this mic is right here on my chest. I, when I watch these videos back when I'm editing them, I hear myself, <sighs> I breathe like I'm uh, either out of shape or carrying a lot of extra weight, which frankly I am carrying a little extra weight, but not enough to make me huff and puff. I sound like a smoker, which I have never been. And I don't know what that heavy breathing business is about. I don't, it makes me sound like I'm on, yeah, like, like I have the COVID, which I don't. All right, so this is sticky goo. I'm going to open this flower thing up, so I might need to just knead this by hand a little bit. Hang on. Like a big mess. Okay, I'm going to turn it out on the table and do it here. So you can see. You saw me sanitize my hands. Not that it matters, I'm the only one that's going to be eating this fucking bread, because nobody's allowed to see anybody. I don't know if you watched my recipe for the blueberry pie, with a little rant at the end of it uh, that I had recorded a couple days ago, um, about the people that are protesting. First of all, they aren't grassroots protesting out there, they are, they are people that are part of the campaign. Um, and they're very small, less than 1% of the population. You know, it's not like it's some giant movement. But the reason I find that whole, you know, open up the country thing ignorant is nobody's rights are being infringed upon. This isn't about your rights. It's about protecting everybody. And whether you care about your life, like I heard somebody say, like, if I, if I can't live my life the way I want to, it's not worth living at all. And, yeah, that may be how you feel, but... Fact is, you may you may be out there gallivanting and touching everything and, and getting yourself infected, and then you may not have a problem, but you may give it to me. You might go into my supermarket or my gas station or whatever, touch the same can of beans on the shelf that I end up actually buying, and, and then I get sick and I, I could die, or I get sick and I go to the hospital and the first responder, the doctors and nurses and stuff that are there, they get sick and die because I gave them something that you gave me. So it's just, it's not just about you. For, get out, get, you know, it's just, it's not about you. It's about everybody else. It's about the people that are vulnerable, whether they're vulnerable because they're going through chemo and they have a weakened immune system, or they're vulnerable because they're old, or they have those other comorbidities, which is a terrible term, just sounds so grim, but it just means other things that could make you at risk, like heart disease or lung disease or brutal asthma or something. Okay, this looks pretty beautiful to me. Uh, so anyway, the point is, it's not about you, you fuckers. It's about everybody else. It's about, we're all in this together. The whole world is in this together. And if you want proof that you know sheltering in place and the stay-at-home orders work, just look at the difference. California was the first state to implement stay-at-home. We have a very low curve compared to other states that were slower behind us. If you compare the deaths in Ireland, which last time I checked was a long time ago, a couple a week ago maybe, it was like 450 people in Ireland had died because Ireland shut the country down really early. But England had 16,000 deaths because they did not shut the, town, the country down early. And the same thing with Sweden and their neighboring countries. Sweden didn't do anything. They're like, fuck it, we're going to just like live our life and let this thing run its course. And now they've got a big spike in their infections and their deaths the way it looks more like our curve the national curve here, and uh, their surrounding countries don't have anything like that. So, it's empirically provable that, empirically meaning, it, it's, it can be proven with facts that are indisputable, uh, that staying at home does protect people. So, it's not my fault if you marry somebody you hate, <laughs> you don't want to be cooped up with them, if you had a bunch of kids that you can't stand being around. See, I dodged that bullet. I'm single and childless. I don't hate this. Uh, all right, so the deal is with this, I had to let it sit for two to five hours, and after the two to five hours, you can start baking it. The oven, here's the deal. I'm going to come back and uh, bake one, but I've got to wait a little bit. Uh, the oven has to be 450. At the, under, in the oven, this is the great secret to make the, the dough, I mean the bread, crispy. If you like a nice crispy crust, you take, I'm going to take a metal pie tin and put a little, like, you know, half an inch of water in it. I'm going to put that metal pie tin on the floor in the oven. And on the middle rack in the oven, I have, I happen to have an old broken pizza brick that lives there. 
Uh, it just lives there because it's broken and has nowhere else to go. It can live in the stove and, and be out of my sight. And it works really nice. If you watch my Secrets to Great Pizza video, pizza brick and a pizza, a steel pizza tile underneath of it in there on each shelf makes a perfect pizza oven. So anyway, um, you need a cooking sheet or some sort of a thing on your middle shelf in your oven. All of it should be 450 degrees. The oven should be 450. The thing in there that you're going to put the bread on should be 450. And uh, yeah, and so you... Make sure it's 450, and so I'm going to be back in two, in two hours and cut one of these off and bake it up. Uh, so yeah, but the water, little pan of water in the bottom of the stove creates a steam which counterintuitively makes a crustier red. So I'm going to uh, leave this covered, and I'm going to be back. Okay, I am back. Let's take a look at this bread. Okay, that's awesome. That is awesome. It's risen up nice. It's risen. It has risen. Punch it down. All right. I'm gonna. Um. I need some flour for my hands. So let me get some flour. Flour. Okay. I don't want to put it in that on that part. This is parchment paper that I'm gonna cook the bread on. I'm gonna take about a piece of this. It's pretty sticky. It's okay. Take maybe a third of it. Okay. Woo, it's sticky. I guess I should put a little bit of flour on it to just to keep it from being so sticky. So it won't stick to that parchment. Alright, so there we have it. Last time the only I made this dough once before, and I made the first loaf that I made was about half of the quantity. I'm going to go with less than that because I want that to last. That'll last for days in the, in the fridge, raw. Um, I had put it on parchment paper, but I used some corn starch, or not starch, some cornmeal or something under it to keep it from sticking. And the corn starch stuff burned and it made, instead of having the nice smell of bread cooking in the oven, I got the smell of corn whatever meal burning in the oven, which wasn't nice. So, all right, sorry, I wash my hands, get the sticky dough off. So you see I made a little loaf there. There's no excess flour really on the outside of it. So I don't want that to burn. The oven is 450, that's important. You need to have a cooking sheet or some other sort of surface in the middle shelf of your oven. So a cooking, a cooking cookie sheet, or I've got a pizza brick in there, pizza, yeah, brick. Um, and I'm going to put this bowl, this pie tin of water on the bottom of my oven, on the floor of my oven. And I'm going to cook, this is not sticking, I don't want any flour to burn, so, okay. So there it is, the little, a little loaf. I'll make it a little bit long and like that. Show you. Okay, I'm going to take a knife and I'm just going to, just for decoration purposes, I'm going to put, I need a serrated knife. It'll work. A little cut, just make a little decoration on it. Right? So there's like four little cuts. They're not really, I wish I had a serrated knife. All my serrated knives are in the dishwasher right now. It's going to have to work. And I'm just going to put that on the bottom and this on the, on the thing and I'm going to give it, I think when I did half the dough it took me 25 minutes. So I'll check this about 15 or 20 minutes and then I'll get back and show you what it looks like. Okay, I left that in the oven for 15 minutes. 15 minutes is all a piece of loaf of bread this big took. It is crunchy on the outside. It's, oh, it's beautiful. And oh my God, it smells so good. So there you have it. There is, I'm still just literally out of the oven, too hot to hold. <clears throat> it's a beautiful thing. And so easy, you saw me make it right in front of you. So I recommend it very highly. I used maybe a little bit more than a third, maybe closer to half of that loaf. But I am excited to cut into it and uh, put some vegan butter on it or something. I don't even know what, but it's gonna be a beautiful thing. Maybe I'll just make some spaghetti sauce and just dip it in spaghetti sauce. But it's beautiful, and so there you have it. That is my Via Andrea. Lowry of Little Rock, Arkansas. That is my version of her artisans, actually her recipe, um, verbatim. So there you have it. I'm what a rambling fool I am. It was easy. Try it. If you can't find yeast in your stores, try Amazon. There's, there's ways to get yeast. And so there. Okay. Be safe out there. Wear your mask when you're in public. I just saw a thing on the news. Somebody <coughs> coughed and they showed like in two seconds it had gone three feet and, and 
15 seconds it had gone 9 feet and 45 seconds it had gone 13 feet. They had this like smoky like green mist showing where the cough went. So stay safe, wear a mask, protect yourself, protect other people from your cooties too. And that is that. Please subscribe and until next time. The next recipe I'm going to post is going to be uh, mushroom pate, vegan mushroom pate, which will go very nicely on this. So be well, be safe, and until next time, bye.